Cambridge Springs Public Library. I'm glad you're here to join me for story time again. Um, our theme this week is fairy tales reimagined. So uh, a lot of you have heard the traditional fairy tales, how they're usually told, um, but I've got a couple that are kind of told differently and they're kind of fun. Um, so after you finish this story time, don't forget to go on Read Squared and complete your mission um, so you can get some points for those grand prizes. Um, and then go on to our YouTube channel again and find the video for the craft and do our craft um, for some more prizes, for some more points for prizes. So let's get started. Uh, so this one is called A Wolf's Tale. So it is um, a different take on the furry little pigs. Gather round, little ones. Don't be afraid. I'm going to tell you a story. My great, 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 great grandfather was a very bad wolf. Do you remember the story of the three little pigs? You know, the ones with the houses made of straw, sticks, and bricks. And do you remember the wolf who huffed and puffed and blew their houses down? Well, that was him. But this is a story about me. I had lived here above Pig City for many years, watching, waiting. Then one summer's day, as a breeze was blowing over Pig City, I noticed the little pigs were up to something. They were whispering and reading notes, and suddenly a whispery wind caught a note and blew it right up to my window. Invitation, you are invited to Little Pig's surprise birthday party today, four o'clock, Brick House. Finally, I had my chance and I got straight to work, preparing a little surprise of my own. I worked all day until I saw the little pigs scurrying across town, making their way to the party. So with my surprise ready, I crept down the hill after them. I wonder what sort of surprise. Pig City was huge. I wandered the streets, but I couldn't find Brick House anywhere. So I knocked on a door. Please, Mrs. Pig, can you tell me where Brick House is? I asked, I've got a surprise for them. No, 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 not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, screamed the pig inside. I walked further and my package feeling heavier, but I still couldn't find Brick House. So I knocked on another door. Uh, excuse me, please, Mr. Pig, can you tell me where Brick House is? I asked, I've got a surprise for them. No, 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 not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, boomed the pig inside. I walked even further, and just as I was about to give up, I saw it. Brick house. Knock, knock, knock. Please, little pigs, little pigs, can I come in? I asked. I've got a surprise for you. No, 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 not by the hairs of our chinny chin chin, squealed the pigs inside. Please, little pigs, I asked again. I've brought something for you. I heard running and squeaking, but no one let me in. The walk had been long and my package was heavy. Tired and fed up, I pushed and pushed against the door. And slowly, it creaked down. Don't be afraid, little pigs. You see, I've brought you something. It's big and it's bright and I made it just for you. Oh, look, they're so scared. It's a... Why does that have any ideas? It's a cake. Oh, look at that beautiful cake he made. That day, the little pigs let me join their party. And the only huffing and puffing was for the candles. So you see, little ones, my great, 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 great grandfather was a very bad wolf, but I'm not. And now little pigs and big not so bad wolves can live happily ever after together. It's bedtime, the story is over, and I hope you're all sleepy. Otherwise, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll eat you all up. Just kidding. <laughs> I liked that one. Now, this one is called Little Red Hot. 
So it's going to be like, what do you think? Little Red Riding Hood, right? It's a little red hot. Once upon a time, there was a little bitty Texas gal called Little Red Hot. Folks called her that because she loved to eat red hot chili peppers. She ate peppers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She ate pepper ice cream for dessert. She had hot pepper cake for her birthday with jalapenos on top instead of candles. Folks used to say that Little Red Hot could eat fire out of a stove. Little Red Hot would answer, nah, I wouldn't do that. Fire ain't hot enough. One day, Little Red Hot's mama said to her, Little Red Hot, I heard from your grandma today. She's feeling poorly. I think she has cold. Could you drop by and look in on her? She'd feel so much better to see you. I'll do that, Mama, Little Red Hot said. I'll bake a hot pepper pie, Grandma's favorite. It'll knock those cold germs right out of her. Little Red Hot got busy in the kitchen. In no time at all, she had mixed up a hot pepper pie. She used Louisiana hot sauce instead of milk and filled the crust with eggs, cheese, and the hottest chili pepper she could find. Jalapeno peppers that could make a grown man weep. Tabasco peppers that could knock over a longhorn, habanero peppers that could take paint off a wall, and Nagra Jolakayas from India, one of the hottest peppers in the world. Each one came with a warning label. Little Red Hot put the pie in the oven to bake. She didn't even have to turn the oven on. That pie was so hot it baked itself. Little Red Hot got on her pony and set off for Grandma's house. Along the way, she met up with Pecos Bill and his cowboys. Hey, Little Red Hot, where are you going? They called to her. I'm taking a hot pepper pie to Grandma. She has a cold, Little Red Hot said. Now you be careful on your way to Grandma's house, said Pecos Bill. We just talked to three little tamales. They said that Senor Lobo, the big bad wolf, is prowling around the neighborhood. You keep an eye out for him. I'll do that, Pecos Bill, Little Red Hot promised. No sooner had Pecos Bill and the cowboys ridden out of sight when Little Red Hot saw a big gray animal loping toward her. Hold it right there. Don't you come any closer, Little Red Hot yelled. I know who you are. You're Senor Lobo. Pecos Bill warned me about you. The big gray animal stopped running. You got me all wrong, miss, he said. I'm not Senor Lobo. I'm Senor Coyote. I may be tricky, but I wouldn't hurt a fly. You're mighty big for a coyote, Little Red said. You're mighty smart, little girl, and pretty too. Where are you going? I'm going to visit my grandma. She's feeling poorly, said Little Red Hot. Oh, what a good little girl you are. You tell your grandma I hope she feels better, and off he went. You think it's Coyote or Lobo the wolf? Let's see. Of course, that big gray animal wasn't Senor Coyote at all. It was Senor Lobo, and Little Red Hot had no business talking to him. But it was too late to do anything about that now. Even worse, Senor Lobo knew a shortcut that took him straight to Grandma's house. He stepped up to the front door and knocked. Little Red Hot, is that you? Grandma said. Senor Lobo made his voice sound like Little Red Hot's. Yes, Granny, I heard you were sick. I hope you're feeling better. I feel better already knowing that you're here. Come on in. Mm, that naughty wolf. Senor Lobo did just that. Grandma let out a yelp when she saw him. Grandma was sick, but she wasn't slow. She jumped out the window and ran. I'll catch her later, Senor Lobo said. He rummaged through Grandma's clothes until he found a spare nightcap and nightgown. He put them on and hopped into bed just as Little Red arrived. Howdy, Grandma, it's Little Red Hot. I'm sorry you don't feel good. Why is your front door open? To let the breeze in, darling, to let in the breeze, Senor Lobo said. I brought you a surprise, Grandma. Little Red Hot went into the kitchen. She cut a big wedge of hot pepper pie and put it on a plate and carried it into Grandma's bedroom. 
Senor Lobo lay on the bed with the covers pulled up over his nose. Little Red Hot looked at him real hard. Grandma, what big eyes you got. The better to see you with, darling, Senor Lobo said. Grandma, what big ears you got. The better to hear you with, darling, Senor Lobo said. Uh-oh. Grandma, what big teeth you got. Now, don't say another word, because I know what they're for, said Little Red Hot. What are they for, darling? Senor Lobo asked. They're for eating this hot pepper pie I made just for you. Little Red Hot shoved that wedge of pie into Senor Lobo's mouth. Ooh, those are a lot of peppers, you guys. <sighs> to say he yelled wouldn't do him justice. He hollered so loud, space aliens could have heard him over in the next galaxy. He didn't go out the front or the back. He shot straight up like a rocket through the ceiling of Grandma's bedroom, trailing smoke and fire as he went. Whoo! That's when Pecos Bill and the cowboys arrived. Grandma told us about Senor Lobo. Where is he? Little Red Hot pointed up at the hole in the ceiling. He went that away. I don't suppose he'll be back. Would y'all like to stay for supper? I got hot pepper pie for everyone. No thanks, Little Red Hot, Pecos Bill and the Cowboys said. We're brave, all right, but not that brave. So Little Red Hot and her grandma ate that hot pepper pie all by themselves, every last crumb. And guess what? It knocked those cold germs flat out, just as Little Red Hot had promised. Do you like that one? I like that one a lot, you guys. All right, don't forget to go on to Read Squared and complete your mission. I'll see you guys next time. Let's do our closing. Tickle the stars, tickle your toes, turn around and tickle your nose. Reach way down low, reach way up high. Story time's over, so wave bye-bye. See you guys.